Dear reader, I'm Tony, and this is Book Text. I have a different kind of video for you today. One of my favorite times of the year is when we renew, we reset, uh, reflect back on the past year, look forward to a new year, set some goals. So I am actually going to be sharing with you some possible reads for 2021. I'm not committing to read these, but I am suggesting that I would like to read these next year. But first, our word of the day is a delightful slang term. It's the word sprunny. It's a noun, and it refers to a sweetheart. So if you have a sprunny, go tell them that you love them. All right, so I have three collections of books today, and I think this is only part one. I am planning to create a part two to this because there are so many books that I look forward to. Um, but I, right now, have a collection of classics I'd like to get to next year. Um, some writings by uh, women writers between um, the World Wars. So kind of interwar women writers, I guess would be a more succinct way to say that. And then a, a miscellaneous pile that has lots of historical fiction, some contemporary women's fiction, and uh, some mystery, not a ton of mystery, some mystery, um, and some science fiction and fantasy that I'm hoping to maybe get into the mood for soon. So, uh, and what, let me just say that I would love to do more um, buddy reads next year. So if you are interested in or are planning to read any of these books um, and you would like to buddy read with me, please let me know in the comments below. So first let me go over the classics because I wanna make sure that I am still reading classics. It's one of my favorite uh, kind of genres to read in. And the first thing I, I want to um, read in 2021, not the first necessarily chronologically, but uh, is Jane Austen's Northanger Abbey. I haven't read this one yet. I have seen an adaptation, but it was a long time ago. And so I will be basically coming into this not really knowing the story. Um, and I thought I would read the first line of these books to kind of see if it uh, uh, in intrigues you as well. So the first sentence of Northanger Abbey is, no one who had ever seen Catherine Morland in her infancy would have supposed her born to be a heroine. Very intriguing, right up my alley, and I think this is what I'll read for uh, uh, Jane Austen, July. The next classic is Sir Walter Scott's Ivanhoe. This is a medieval romance. I really want to read more Sir Walter Scott. I, and by more, I mean any, because I don't think I've ever read anything I, th I believe I have read Ivanhoe in a shortened version when I was a child, but I, I haven't read the book itself. The first sentence of Ivanhoe is, In that pleasant district of Merry England, which was watered by the River Don, there extended in, in ancient times a large forest, covering the greater part of the beautiful hills and valleys which lie between Sheffield and the pleasant town of Doncaster. So, should be interesting. Then I have two books that I would like to read by L.M. Montgomery. Um, one is the next one in the Anne Green Gables series that I need to read. Um, I'm s slowly making my way through them for the first time, um, which is number four, Anne of Windy Poplars. Um, and the first sentence of this is actually from a letter from Anne Shirley to Gilbert Blythe. Uh, and it has her address at the top, Windy Poplars, Spooks Lane, etc. Dearest. Isn't that an address? Did you ever hear anything so delicious? And Wendy Poplar's Spooks Lane sounds perfect for Anne, surely. Uh, then the other Ellen Montgomery is an, an unfortunate t uh, cover for me, but it's The Story Girl. Um, and this is not in the Anne of Green Gables series, um, but seems to be the, the kind of uh, novel that has a very classical Ellen Montgomery heroine. And it starts, I do like a road, because you can be always wondering what is at the end of it. Um, I've heard wonderful things about this book, really looking forward to it. Then I want to read more Thomas Hardy. I read a Thomas Hardy this year and loved it. I read The Woodlanders, and I am moving on to something more popular by him. I've never read Far From the Madding Crowd. Um, so the, this is kind of a, just a... a as far as I know, a story of a, a woman who is maybe running her own 
uh, land, which was unusual for the time. And of course, there's love interests. And the first sentence of this is, oops, that's the preface. When Farmer Oak smiled, the corners of his mouth spread till they were within an unimportant distance of his ears. His eyes were reduced to chinks, and diverging wrinkles appeared round them, extending upon his countenance like the rays in a rudimentary sketch of the rising sun. I think I've heard of this person, so I'm excited to meet him. And then I would like to continue reading uh, the Barsetshire series by Anthony Trollope. There is actually a read-along uh, on Instagram to do that, so I'll be, I think they're starting with the first book in January, the second book in February, and so on. I just read the first book, so I will be joining them in the second, with the second book in February for Barchester Towers. Um, so these are just kind of, uh, I, I, I don't know exactly how to describe the series because I've only read the first book, but it was about uh, a clergyman and the, the kind of town that he lived in and, and some of the political intrigues that, that happened to him. Uh, so the very first sentence of this book is, in the latter days of July in the year 1850, a most important question was for 10 days hourly asked in the cathedral city of Barchester and answered every hour in various ways. Who was to be the new bishop? I, I loved the first book. Looking forward to continuing with that. So those are the classics that I would like to read. Next, I have the interwar women writers that I would like to read. This is just like a, a an area of literature that I have had little experience in, but I have enjoyed what I what I have read. Um, and the first relates to one of my favorite books from 2020, which was South Riding by Winifred Holtby. I have two others of her books. She didn't write a ton, um, and so I'm hoping to read everything she wrote in this next year. But the two books that I own right now are The Land of Green Ginger and Andrew B. Wold. And these are stories of, uh, you know, intriguing female characters, romances, small town happenings. They are, you can tell by the, the um, covers, that they, there's a lot of beautiful imagery of the English countryside. I, I just really enjoyed these. This one was her first um, published novel. Um, it's from 1923. And this one appears to be about um, a girl who's sent to live in Yorkshire by herself. Um, at 18, which is which is interesting. So the first sentence of Andrew Bewald is, if I can find it. When Sarah Bannister's dog cart bowled along the high street of Market Burton, its progress was observed by several pairs of eyes peeping discreetly from behind lace veiled windows. Sounds classically Winifred. And then the first sentence of the land of green ginger is when the Reverend Ambrose Entwistle had been for six months in his grave, his widow besought an eternal father in heaven to substitute his providence for that of a mortal father upon earth and to assist nature and society in the provision of husbands for her girls. I, I think and, uh, that uh, Winifred Holtby reminds me a little bit of, of like a, a 1930s Jane Austen or George Eliot. So that, that um, if that whets your appetite. Um, then I would like to read Willa Cather's Lucy Gayhart. This is the story of a young woman and it involves a lot of music. Um, and I don't know too much. It's called a haunting novel. Um, so it just, she's, the girl is studying music in Chicago. I've been told lots of good things about it. The first sentence is, in Haverford on the Platte, the townspeople still talk of Lucy Gayhart. So there's a little bit of foreboding there that might, might not end well for Lucy, but that doesn't mean it's not going to be a good book. The next one is Elizabeth Bowen's The Death of the Heart. Uh, this is, well, Elizabeth Bowen, I've never read anything by her, but she has been compared in the reviews in this book to Virginia Woolf, Henry James, Iris Murdoch, Muriel Spark. Um, many of those were her contemporaries. Um, and so this is this is the kind of a, a darker story of young love and betrayal. Um, and the first sentence is just so chilly. That morning's ice, no more than a brittle film, had cracked and was now floating in segments. 
that's not ominous. I don't know what, what ominous is. So there's that book. And then actually one that was, uh, th this book had a, has an introduction written by Elizabeth Bowen is Antonio White's Frost in May. This is an older Virago modern classic edition with a very creepy painting on the front, I think. It just disturbs me. Um, but this is the story of a girl who's sent to live in a convent um, when she's young and her exploits, I guess, I don't know exactly what, but um, the first sentence is, well, these older books, you know, you have to get through the introduction, the preface and all these sorts of things. Nanda was on her way to the convent of the Five Wounds. So you just see her entering that convent. I think she's nine years old, set in 1908, 1912-ish. Um, should be an intriguing read. Then I have a Molly Keene, which this will be my first Molly Keene. She's another contemporary of these other um, writers that we've been looking at. This one is The Knight of Cheerful Countenance, Knight spelled with a K, of course. And this is her very first novel. She wrote it when I think she was 17 or 18, um, published in 1926. And it's, it's a kind of a, a love story from the interwar years. So the first sentence is, the local train from Scarolin clattered haltingly into its terminus, Bungarvin, which like most Irish towns was mainly notable for its dirt, its idlers, and perhaps for the number of RIC who had met their deaths in its licensed premises and neighborhood. Boy, I'm glad I don't have to read this whole thing out loud because I don't know how to pronounce these um, Irish place names. Uh, but I I think it will be just kind of a, a, maybe a little bit of a lighter read, I'm hoping, I don't know. Um, I also have uh, Elizabeth Fair's A Winter Away, and I would like to read this in winter so that I'll probably be getting to this one earlier in the year. Um, and I don't know too much about this except that it's about um, people who who are, let's see, Alice, so, okay, so characters. Maud, Alice, and Alice's companion, Miss Conway, are escaping to the countryside. Um, they've arranged a job for Maud as a secretary to Mr. Feniston, a neighbor who seems to have driven his previous secretary to a nervous breakdown. Um, it's, it's in the furrowed middle brow uh, category at the, uh, what is the name of this? Uh, oh, I can't remember the name of the publishing house. Dean Street Press. Dean Street Press. Um, and this will be my first read of, of theirs and my first Elizabeth Fair. And the first sentence is, I am small and insignificant, said Maud, but this room is going to make me feel much more so. When I went her away. And then I know this will be kind of a, a lighthearted read. This is Miss Reed, uh, a village school. Um, and so this is, uh, Miss Reed was a teacher before she was a writer, and she wrote a lot from her experience. Um, it takes place in a small town, in a village. There's a school. The first sentence is, the first day of term has a flavor that is all its own, a whiff of lazy days behind, and a foretaste of the busy future. And I might start reading that in January as well, when I start a new term at school. So there's that. Now on to some miscellaneous books. First up, Susan Vreeland's Girl in Hyacinth Blue. This is kind of a an art history mystery, perhaps. Um, it, it's supposed to kind of look at the life of this painting and its different owners throughout time. Um, the very first sentence is, Cornelius Engelbrecht invented himself. Should be, it should be intriguing historical fiction um, and art fiction, which is, I'm, I've been collecting a lot of art fiction because I'd like to read more about art, learn more about art. Uh, then this is a contemporary women's fiction, Maeve Binchy's A Week in Winter. This is another one that I would like to read earlier in the year when it is still winter. Um, the first sentence of this is, everyone had their own job to do on the Ryans' farm in Stony Bridge. This will be my first Maeve Binchy. I've been meaning to read her for a long time and this, hopefully, I will read this this next year and get started with her. Uh, then I have a science fiction and you'll see immediately why I chose this. It is uh, The White Plague by Frank Herbert. Frank Herbert wrote Dune, 
which I absolutely loved. It was quite complicated though, um, so it, it would take me a while to get through this. Um, but this is the story of a man who is seeking revenge for the murder of his wife and child, children, and he unleashes, he's a scientist, he unleashes a plague that kills only women. And I'm, I'm very interested in, in the plague part, the, the problems with feminism there, and, and so on. So that would be an interesting, different read for me. Then this book, boy, has this book been hyped up for a while. This is Hilary Mantel's Wolf Hall. This is historical fiction about Henry VIII and Cromwell um, and the kind of attempt to change the, the, uh, the status quo for England. Um, Henry VIII wants to marry Anne Boleyn. Um, I believe this is where, where he wants to, yes, he wants to annul his marriage of 20 years and marry Anne Boleyn. Um, and so this is where that story starts. Uh, and the very first sentence was actually not super intriguing. So now, get up. But the next sentence is, Felled, dazed, silent, he has fallen, knocked full length on the cobbles of the yard. And I believe that's kind of the beginnings of Cromwell's story as a, as a, as a young man. So this has been hyped up a lot. I'm looking forward to it. A lesser known book, but still promising, is Cordelia Underwood or The Marvelous Beginnings of the Moose Path League um, by Van Reed. This is a series I've been finding at um, local used bookstores and have never heard anything about. Van Reed is compared to uh, Charles Dickens. He's a modern writer, but he's writing historical fiction set at the turn of the century in uh, New England. Um, and he's also compared to John Irving, which I haven't read a lot of John Irving either. Um, but it sounds clean, light, romantic, those kinds of uh, <laughs> charming, like you might expect from a Charles Dickens. And the, the first sentence is in the prologue. He emerged when night had fallen from the rough end of Portland's wharf district, where illegal liquor was peddled where sailors and coarse landsmen and hard women caroused, and where well-meaning people did not linger. So kind of an interesting setup. I do like that writing style very much. Then I have another beginning to a series that I've been collecting. Um, this is An Irish Country Doctor by Patrick Taylor. It is an, obviously an Irish story, and it seems to be about a cute funny little town in Ireland, Northern Ireland, and um, this book in particular is about the eccentric doctor um, and a new doctor who goes to live there. And the very first sentence is, Barry Laverty, Dr. Barry Laverty, his houseman's year just finished, ink barely dry on his degree, pulled his beat up Volkswagen Beagle to the side of the road and peered at a map lying on the passenger seat. So he's arriving at the town at the beginning. I'm looking forward to this because it just sounds like a lovely read. Then a more challenging one is Ibid by Mark Dunn. I've been collecting Mark Dunn's stories. He loves to play with language and writing. And this is a story that is told mostly through footnotes. Um, and the first um, couple pages are actually letters because the, the premise is that the a writer's manuscript has been destroyed. The only copy of his manuscript has been destroyed. And he's trying to still tell the story. Um, so he, it's, it's told mostly through footnotes. I think that's hilarious. There's not really a first sentence then to share because it's part of the letter. Um, but it, it just sets up the that he's written this story um, about a three-legged circus performer come deodorant magnet and humanitarian. Um, and that's the story, uh, the person whose story is being told. Should be intriguing. Another story that seems like I have a theme is Year of Wonders, a novel of the plague by Geraldine Brooks. I've heard so many good things about Geraldine Brooks. And this particular book um, has, has been noted as a notable book. I don't know what that means exactly, but this is the story of um, the 1666 plague. Um, it features a young woman, Anna, Anna, and Al Anna quarantines her village um, when they start to show signs of the plague. 
but then she deals with all the backlash of quarantine. And that sounds super familiar, and I would like to identify it with the characters in this story. So I will hopefully be getting to Year of Wonders, which puts a, a, a more positive spin on a year of disaster, which I think we all need. I forgot to read the first sentence of Year of Wonders. So the first sentence is, I used to love this season. Boy, that has a familiar sentiment, doesn't it? Another historical fiction, um, looking at medieval times, um, Middle Ages, is The Name of the Rose by Umberto Eco. And this is what I know is it's kind of a mystery involving a monk, possibly. Franciscans, um, the year is 1327. Ooh. Um, so I, I have heard a lot. This is book has been around for, since 1980, so it's not necessarily new, but it is new to me. Um, and this is how it begins. I'm going to read the first two sentences. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. This was beginning with God, and the duty of every faithful monk would be to repeat every day with chanting humility the one never-changing event whose incontrovertible truth can be asserted. It's translated from, uh, I think, Italian, I want to say. Next up is a epic fantasy. This is actually a trilogy, I believe, a trilogy all collected into one book. It is The Deeds of Pax Paxenarian by Elizabeth Moon. Just seemed interesting, woman-written, woman-led, um, epic fantasy series, and the first sentence is, and I say you will, bellowed the burly sheep farmer, Dorothan Canison. It's a very classic epic fantasy beginning. Then this book has been compared to The Name of the Rose and similar stories, but it features, instead of a, a monk detective, it features literary critics um, as detectives, and also as maybe romantic interests. This book is Possession by A.S. Byatt, Another one that's been around for a while, but I've never read. Um, and from what I know, it's, it's about maybe people who are studying um, literary figures from our past and, and trying to unravel a mystery about them. Um, and the first sentence is, the book was thick and black and covered with dust. So I just love that opening line because it makes me think of some of the research that I've done in, in my own school uh, literary criticism you know, classes. Last but not least, I have the Doomsday Book. Sorry, just Doomsday. Doomsday Book by Connie Willis. This is a science fiction, uh, but also kind of fantasy historical fiction. Not quite sure, but the premise is that this uh, scientist, female scientist, is going to travel in time to study the Middle Ages, and she gets stuck there. And has to, they have to figure out a way to bring her back. And so it's mostly about her life. Um, they're in the Middle Ages and people in the future, you can see the futuristic technology there, are, are trying to get her back. And the first sentence starts, Mr. Dunworthy opened the door to the laboratory and his spectacles promptly steamed up. So that's part one of, of books that I would love to read in the next year. If any of these sound interesting to you and you would like to do a buddy read with me, please let me know. If not, uh, just tell me kind of what you're, maybe what you're thinking of reading for next year. And remember, there's always another book.